Cultural Sensitivity in Brain Injury Rehabilitation. My name is Dr. Anthony Lecarica. I work at Kessler Foundation. I am a clinical research scientist and neuropsychologist, and I'm very happy to be speaking today about uh, some of the issues having to do with uh, cultural diversity in traumatic brain injury rehabilitation. There has been a lot of interest in your recent article in neurorehabilitation. Why do you think that is? I'm actually very pleased with the response that the article has been getting. I, I didn't expect it, certainly, but I can understand it uh, because of the way that things are currently uh, in, you know, this is a country where there's a lot of diversity and uh, these are issues that have been gaining more attention over the past several years. If you look at some of the publications and just put in the keywords like race, ethnicity, and then pair it with rehabilitation, you can see that there has been uh, a growth in that area of research over the past several years. So I'm very happy that it's getting the, the attention that it is. A growing segment of the population, such as minorities, have poorer outcomes after brain injury. Could you describe that problem? Immigrants coming into this country often don't speak the language and they're limited in the kinds of jobs that they can get. A lot of times they're restricted to jobs that are manual labor jobs that are often more risky, uh, physically risky, than you know, desk type jobs. And this uh, puts them at higher risk for uh, brain injury. The other issue is a lot of people coming into this country tend to live in areas that are populated. That we have little pockets of uh, minority populations. And unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, there's a lot of socioeconomic status and things tied up in this that increase the rate of crime in those areas. And uh, so they're at risk for, on a lot of levels for sustaining a brain injury. So on one side you have the issue of increased risk of injury, and then on the other side you have uh, this great influx of uh, people into this country, and we already are a country that's known for our diversity. A lot of times, however, the diversity in medical staff doesn't always equal that of the patients that we serve. And so there sometimes are cultural issues that come up uh, that lead to misunderstandings or things like that. How can researchers and clinicians begin to address this problem and provide culturally competent rehabilitation? In order to provide culturally competent rehabilitation, it seems like a very daunting task. And if you think about learning about all these multiple cultures that we have in this country, it does seem like a very daunting task. But actually, what is the most important thing is to recognize where you're coming from that you see the world through a lens that is ethnocentric and very, very rooted in your own experiences and beliefs. And it's sometimes hard to think outside of that. And that is the, the number one thing uh, when it comes to dealing with people from different cultures. The other issue is once you realize that you're coming, seeing the world through your own lens, recognizing that other people from other cultures are just the same. They have their own experiences, they come with their own culture, that they see the world in their way, which is not necessarily the way that you might see the world. And so it's really important to be able to think outside the box. I always think it's important to ask questions when you're not sure. Uh, a lot of times, patients will, will be very, feel respected when you ask questions. You, know, you want to know more about their culture and how you can best serve them in this rehabilitation setting. One issue is that the doctor-patient relationship they have in other, other cultures may not be the same as here. And in the rehabilitation setting, there's a very unique role that the patient has. And it's not putting all of the power in the hands of the medical staff. It's more of a collaboration, which is very strange for some cultures who see the uh, doctor as being the uh, authority, the one who's going to provide a treatment that's going to lead to a cure or you know whatever the ailment is. In this setting, there's a lot that is put onto the patient. The patient is responsible to put a lot of effort into their therapies and to be more of a collaborator with the medical staff. And that alone is one issue that I found to be something that's very different in this setting that people from other cultures have a hard time understanding and sometimes need a little bit of education about how things work in the rehabilitation setting. Can you give an example of how lack of cultural sensitivity can adversely affect care? 
Lack of cultural sensitivity can often impact care. One of the most common things that I see is centers around food. I mean, food is a very central part of culture. A lot of times people come here and, you know, the, the, this hospital has really good food, but um, people always complain about hospital food, and it's not the same things they're used to. And of course, it's healthier because they are going to reduce the, the salt, sodium, and things like that. But the having to have a diet that is completely different from what you're used to is an adjustment. And uh, whenever possible, it's good to, to see if the family can bring food from home. You usually have to speak with the speech pathologist and the dietary to make sure that there are no restrictions, that the person's able to swallow and that they're gonna be able to eat their own food safely. And then family can bring food that they're used to. It makes a huge difference in terms of appetite and people who might have been labeled as depressed or not having no appetite, when they have their own food, it makes them just feel more comfortable and their appetite is back. Uh, that's one, one very small example. There are a lot of uh, other ways that usually in how people make assumptions about people's behavior, assuming that it's due to the brain injury or that, for example, someone eating with their hands. In some cultures, it's, it's perfectly normal. That's the norm. In the, some Asian cultures, they use chopsticks. Here we use fork and knife. Seeing someone use their hands to eat their food, you may think, oh, this person's confused. So there's a lot of misunderstandings that can come from seeing something only as a brain injury and not widening your, your lens to see that it may be, there may be cultural factors involved. How about prejudices that patients may have? How can they adversely affect care? Patients also coming from other cultures or even from our culture have their own prejudices just like everyone else. A lot of times, unfortunately, I have heard that patients say derogatory things about a particular aid based on their own experiences, maybe their upbringing, uh, having to do with uh, seeing other cultures as being lesser. This can cause a problem, especially if they act on these beliefs or say things, or it, it can make a very, very tense relationship with staff. Uh, these are issues that, that usually it's good to have a rehabilitation psychologist on staff who can mediate. And you know, in some cases, it may be better for the patient and for the staff member to have some other staff member be taking care of that patient. That isn't always possible, but that is just one particular solution. And like I said, a rehabilitation psychologist can do a lot to uh, help with these kinds of issues. What are the needs in the clinical arena? Training staff, training staff members to be more open-minded is key. I think it's great to learn about other cultures. Obviously, you can't learn about every other culture, but uh, everyone finds themselves in a certain environment where there may be a predominant minority culture in that environment. You should really know about that culture that you're working with. Those are the patients who are going to be coming to see you. So it's important to, to be aware of what those customs and beliefs are. Other than that, it's just important to be willing to ask the patient questions about their culture so that you can have a better understanding. Showing that is, is going to show respect for the patient, that you care enough to want to provide the best care possible within the context of their culture and understanding that you may see the world differently, that everyone sees the world you know, very differently. What needs to be considered in research protocols in order to improve future outcomes for minority populations? In research, it's challenging when you have people from other cultures. You need to make sure your staff is equipped to, to work with individuals from different cultures. Maybe having someone who can speak a, a different language, you can open it up to one minority population that may be prevalent in your area. But by not having these people in research, we're missing a huge piece of you know, explaining everything that we're studying. So it reduces the generalizability of the studies. So uh, I think it's important here. I think uh, Kessler Foundation, the uh, TBI model systems put a lot of importance on multiculturalism. And so I'm very grateful that, that they're doing work that looks at these issues, uh, things like acculturation, or which has to do with how someone has assimilated into the culture. And 
different people, that's one of the major issues, that one of the variables that causes these issues is level of acculturation. Knowing that can give you a huge amount of information in working with someone. Any final thoughts, Dr. Lacarica? One thing that I see is, I think it maybe, maybe it's from being from, uh, I'm Puerto Rican, my parents were from Puerto Rico, and I grew up in a, you know, it was a, another land in my house, and then you go out and it's the world. But um, I think I am kind of have a m more, uh, I don't know, sensitivity to these issues. But a lot of people don't, and I mean, most people don't. And for example, when I go out to eat, a lot of times uh, I'll be eating something, it'll be spicy, and I'll say, you know, I reject it, it's too spicy. People often say, well, don't your people like spicy foods? And, you know, my response is kind of, it's funny that they would say that because uh, that's not really true. Uh, you know, there are cultures, Latin American cultures, that do Mexican, uh, several South American, Central American cultures that really do like spicy food. In Puerto Rico, they like spicy food, but it's not picante, like the hot spices. So it's more like uh, things that give it a flavor, but it's not the hot, hot spices. So, I mean, little things like that, it's, it's always interesting to me to see how people perceive things. And these are, you know, friends. So these are people that, I, that they're not racist, they're not prejudiced. They just come with their own worldview. And so, you know, educating people is a big part of, of the solution to these issues.